Okay. All right. Are you go ahead? <laughs> Clerk call roll. Glenn Whitley, County Judge. Here. Roy C. Brooks, Commissioner Precinct One. Present. Marty Van Ravensway, Commissioner Precinct Two. <laughs> Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct Three. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our invocation today will be delivered by Reverend uh, Paul John Roach from the Unity Church of Fort Worth. Welcome, sir. We appreciate you uh, coming down today. After the invocation, please remain standing for our pledges. So let us pray. Dear God, help these commissioners and their staff and all who have business in this court to think to speak and to act wisely today. May they remember what is truly important and help them to leave a lasting legacy that benefits all. For wise stewardship is more pleasing to you, God, than temporary gain. Dear Creator, we give you the glory now and always, and so it is. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you again, sir, for uh, coming out today. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of court, we have um, several announcements for you this morning. First of all, today will be the day that uh, we pass the tax rates and the budgets for uh, three different entities. That will be the, the county government, the hospital district, and also the emergency services district. These are going to require some public hearings, and we have four different public hearings this morning, two related to budget-related activities and two for transportation, and one for transportation and one for CDBG. We're not going to ask that you take action on the public hearings because we'll be taking action on those items later on in the agenda. With that also, uh, Your Honor, members of court, uh, we do have a corrected court communication under the administrator section. This is item 9A2. Uh, there was just, we want to correct one number on it. it. It's in the background. We'll talk about that just a second when we get into that particular item. Also, under human resources, item 9H3, this is departmental reorganization for the district attorney's office. We are going to be considering that particular item after close today. And then finally, members of court, uh, under purchasing, item 9K4, this concerns bid number 2010-116, uh, uh, it's the sale of recycled paper. You do have a revised court communication in your red folder this morning as it relates to that particular item. Thank you, court members. Thank you. Court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of August the 31st. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, we have some proclamations. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, I believe you have a, uh, a resolution. I have a re resolution for the 100th uh, anniversary of the historic Worth Heights Neighborhood Association. If you would read that into the record, please. Okay. Whereas the historic Worth Heights neighborhood was established in the 1910 when Hispanic railroad workers brought their families to live in the area, making it one of the oldest Hispanic neighborhoods in Fort Worth, and whereas a community quickly developed as homes were built, a church was established and stores were opened, and whereas after the men returned home from World War II, they asked for a school to be built to educate their children and to begin to improve their neighborhoods, asking that streets be paved, stop signs be installed, and sidewalks be provided for the safety of, of their children, and whereas the people of Worth Heights acted as one family, looking out for each other, helping each other, in their daily lives and raising their children to be active participants in civic life 
while encouraging them to continue their education. And whereas the Worth Heights has continued to flourish, producing many professionals, educators, and entrepreneurs, with many of the descendants of the early railroad workers continuing to live or returning to the neighborhood, and whereas these families, as well as others who have moved to Worth Heights, will continue their proud tradition of community involvement and educating their children for the next 100 years, now therefore be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby congratulate Worth Heights neighborhood on the occasion of its 100th anniversary. In witness whereof, we have heretofore set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 14th day of September 2010. I move for its approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Now we have a large delegation here uh, from the Worth Heights, and rather than the judge and I messing up the names, I would like for all of you to join me up here at the podium. Oh. And I'm going to ask the spokesman of this group to introduce each of your people that are here today. Chicken. So if you'll meet me at the podium, there's certain ways you can handle it. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to remind you of that in a few minutes. <laughs> Yeah, he, he's pretty smooth about that. Yeah, he did. He, got, he, he was real smooth about that. <laughs> right. Good morning. That comes from your first. Oh, okay. Good morning. Oh, oh. All right. Thank you. So, I'm going to turn around. We're going to we'll make this presentation back, back to the crowd, but I want to congratulate you. Y'all uh, are in the heart of my precinct, and it's my honor to serve, uh, to present this resolution to you. I appreciate all of you being here. If you would introduce your delegation. Okay. Um, Madam Chairperson, Mr. Vargas, Mr. Father, Tom Vargas, Steve Hume, Bob Kidd, Jeffrey Vargas, Samora, Samora. All right. And uh, my name is Joe Kipperman. All right. If y'all would line up here so we can all go. Judge Willie, Commissioners, Commissioner Johnson, thank you on behalf of the Worth Heights neighborhood and all its residents, thank you very much for this wonderful proclamation. This is a proud moment for all of us. Strong neighborhoods translate to strong counties. So here's to the next 100 years. Thank you all very much. Appreciate that. Commissioner Brooks. Uh, I uh, move ratification of the resolution to the Fort Worth Metropolitan Black Chamber of Commerce Women's Division and the proclamation honoring Hi Hispanic Heritage Month, both of which have already been presented. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And then uh, Commissioner Brooks and Commissioner Johnson, I believe you all have uh, a proclamation together. Yes, sir, if you would read it into the record. You bet. Whereas throughout American history, many men and women have bravely served in our military and sacrificed much to preserve our country and protect democracy around the world, and whereas some of those brave men and women who answered the call to service were captured in conflict and imprisoned by our enemies, and the fate of more than 88,000 Americans who served in World War I through, uh, through to our current conflicts remain unknown. And whereas on September 17, 2010, we will honor those Americans who were prisoners of war and recognize them for the courage and determination they showed in the face of unspeakable hardships. And we honor those who remain unaccounted for, especially remembering the sacrifices of their families 
who must face each day without knowing the fate of their loved ones. And whereas the Benbrook Memorial VFW Post and George R. Boer VFW Auxiliary encourage Tarrant County residents to never forget the sacrifices made by those who so courageously and selflessly defended our nation and protected our way of life. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby proclaim September 17, 2010, as POW MIA Recognition Day in Tarrant County. In witness whereof, we have heretofore set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 14th day of September 2010. Move for its approval. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Um, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And I believe we have Commander Jim Lacker and uh, Mrs. Cookie Rogers uh, present to accept the plaque. So if y'all would join us down at the podium, Commissioner Brooks. And the uh, plaque for the Benbrook Memorial BFW post will be presented at another time. She needs a lot of instruction on that stuff. Well, I'd like to thank the commissioners for having us here and for the proclamation. Uh, our uh, POWMIA ceremony is going to be on uh, Sunday, the 19th at 4, at the White Settlement Post right off Spur 341. Uh, you'll see us on the left just before we get to White Settlement Road. Uh, I invite everyone to come out. It's going to be a very moving ceremony. Thank you, sir. Well, we cannot tell you how much we appreciate the sacrifices that you have made. This is a very small uh, token of, of how much we appreciate what you have done and uh, what others have done for this country. and in preserving the freedoms that we enjoy. So thank you very, very much. For thank you, sir. Thank you. And next we have our uh, employee recognition, which uh, again is, you know, we have one more thing, I guess, don't we? Yes, uh, but we've got, uh, I guess, Commissioner Johnson, you have another Resolution. I do, and, and we're going to do this twice. We're going to present this to the group today, but also this coming Saturday, uh, I will be out at their hall to uh, make a presentation. But it's um, <laughs> congratulatory resolution, 100th anniversary of SPJST Lodge Number 92. And I got to tell a story about myself. Uh, I was born and raised down in Central Texas. Uh, and there was several JPJST halls around, and we used to enjoy parties and a lot of dances out there at those locations, and we called it Some People Jitterbug, Some Try. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that goes back a long ways, and uh, really some fine people in this organization, but if you would read that into the record, please. Thank you. Whereas the Savonic Benef Benevolent Order of the State of Texas, better known as the SPJST, the initials of its name in the Czech language, was founded in LaGrange, Texas in 19, excuse me, in 1897 as a fraternal benefit society to ensure the financial security of its members. And whereas on September 4th, 1910, Lodge Number 92 was organized in Fort Worth after many Czech families moved to Tarrant County to seek employment at the Armour and Company and Swift and Company packing plants, and whereas the meeting of the lodge named Alliance of Czechoslovakians, Czechoslovakians were held in different <laughs> members' homes until 1917 when they moved into their first building in the 2600 block of Houston Street in Fort Worth, Texas, 
And whereas in 1938 a new lodge was built on three acres of land on the Roberts Cutoff Road and is the site where meetings are held today, and whereas members of SPJST are committing their time and energy to the support of worthwhile causes, helping people in need by working in hospitals, senior citizens' homes, raising money for scholarship, food banks, volunteer fire departments, drug abuse programs, and various charities, and whereas SPJST offers a, traditional, offers a tradition of helping people to care for their families and are extending it to their communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby rec recognize and congratulate the SPJST Lodge Number 92 on the occasion of its 100th anniversary. In witness whereof, we have heretofore set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 14th day of September, 2010. I move its approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. And if you folks would join me down at the uh, podium, please. We were trying to figure out why you were here. <laughs> we were trying to figure out why Bill was here from the city of Hearst. We get him anywhere we can. Yeah, I know. You've you kind of been scraping the bottom of the barrel here. I would, I would, oh, no, I would, not Bill. I was outside paying a ticket. <laughs> Commissioners, we want to thank you very much. It's an honor that you bestowed on us today, and we're very proud of that. Uh, we've been here for 100 years, and we hope to be another 100 years. And uh, we hope to continue to provide services for the city and county and also uh, for our Czech heritage. So, again, we thank you very much for this honor. Was thank Bill you. one of your charter thank members? He must be. He's no, ready. but my wife was. <laughs> I just will remind you that this is live streaming video, and she probably has seen that right now, and you're in big trouble. <laughs> well, we just celebrated uh, 52 years, and she is a Shalupka, okay? And I, and I, I actually uh, got her in the 11th grade is when we actually got together. We were engaged in the 11th grade. Bill and, and his wife are very active in our since. church. Bill is on the Hearst City Council and does a tremendous amount of work for our community, and we appreciate him very, very much. So, again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fickus, I believe you've got an announcement. I do. Um, I will hold this up. Carolyn, do your part. <laughs> we are having a an event called Empowering Seniors 2010, and it's going to be on October 1st, and it will be at uh, a location that is owned by First Baptist Church of Euless. It will be at their Campus West facility, which is across the street from Trinity High School in Euless. Also, it's across from the church. And on that day for this Empowering Seniors, it starts at 8.30, we'll have food, door prizes, we're going to have workshops. Uh, one of them is put on by the Watchdog Nation, Dave Lieber with the Star Telegram. We're going to have entertainment, health screenings, um, and it's all free. It's all free. But you need to register. If you'll remember, empoweringseniors.com, you can go register. And it's October 1st. That's on, on a Friday. And uh, we'd love to see you there. Thank you very much. And now we will uh, 
recognize our employees who are celebrating their anniversaries uh, in 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 year increments. So uh, please, as I call your name, uh, stand and remain standing throughout your category, and then at the end we'll recognize all of those in that particular category. First is our uh, five-year um, employees, uh, Terry Butts, Sheriff Department, Judith uh, Chow with CSCD. If it sounds like it, stand up. I'm not saying a thing. I know, but yeah, you don't need to say anything after you kind of <laughs> just slicked right over yours there. Carolyn Davis, Sheriff Confinement. Sonia Embry, Sheriff Confinement. There we go. Arturo Gallegos, District Clerk. Christina Holmes, Sheriff Confinement. Margaret Cusera, Sheriff Confinement. Catherine McClure, District Attorney's Office. Sarah Mincheka, County Clerk. Was I anywhere close? Mincheka. That's close. Hey, look. <laughs> if she stood up, I was close. <laughs> Armando Navarro, Sheriff Confinement. Ada Oliveira, Juvenile Services. Linda Reynolds, CSCD. Sabrina Sabin, District Attorney's Office. Daniel Turner, Sheriff Confinement. Carmea Woodson, CSCD. Those are our five-year employees. Let's give them all a hand. Now, Daniel, is that, are you Daniel back there in the back? You didn't step out? Was there somebody? I, I saw them. I saw him raise his hand. Okay, you raised your hand. All right, well, I saw them giving you a hard time because you didn't step forward, and so I thought, well, I better go ahead and just make sure we call attention to you there. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want anybody to miss you. You can thank both of them for that. Uh, Appreciate it. <laughs> now for our 10-year employees. Charles Anderson, Juvenile Services. It's Charles. Melissa Barbola, District Attorney's Office. Anita Bells, Tax Office. Was I close? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Vanessa Banda, Juvenile Services. I wasn't, was I close? It was close. It was close. <laughs> <laughs> I'm betting not. <laughs> Robert Browder. District Attorney's Office. I think I was pretty close on that one. I've seen him a few times, unfortunately. <laughs> you always do good work. It's just not usually the most happiest of times when you come in to talk with us. <laughs> Dan Cheney, Juvenile Services. Nancy Kuhn, Public Health. Welcome. Sherry Crass, Information Technologies. Virginia Esparza, Esparza, Esparza. Yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> Public Health. Tracy Farmer, Precinct 3 Maintenance. I thought I recognized you back there. I figured I was trying to, I, I didn't get a chance to look down the list quick enough to see who it was, but I, I knew you were out there, Tracy. Okay. Stacy Hendrickson, Juvenile Services. Patty Hooper, Sheriff Confinement. Cedric Jackson, Juvenile Services. Ronald Jones, Juvenile Services. Paula Loggenecker, Information Technology. Alyssa Morris, District Clerk. Curtis Patterson, Precinct 2 Maintenance. James Rizzi, District Attorney's Office. Gloria Ross, Tax Office. Eve Rusin, Public Health. Michael Sanders, Precinct 1 Maintenance. Cheryl Sherwood, Housing. 
Alan Wise, County Clerk. And those are our tenure. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. Now for our 15-year employees, Mary Aguirre, Justice of the Peace, Precinct 4, Patrice Harrison, CSCD, Patrice. Nancy Turnage, Public Health, and these are our 15-year employees. Let's give them a big hand. Now for our 20 plus year, we, uh, uh, I give them a call and we talk for a few minutes and uh, uh, then I get a chance to, to bring everybody up here. We had a, a group, we had about 15. The first one on the list is uh, Debbie Agnew with CSCD and she said she was not going to be able to be here today. She's celebrating 20 years with, uh, with the county. So when you, if you, you folks in CSCD, if you run across Debbie, uh, she had an appointment this morning, wasn't able to make it. Congratulate her on her 20 years uh, with Tarrant County. Uh, next is Terry Amador. No, she goes by Terry. Okay. But the last name, uh, Clopiza. Terry, stand up. Oh, uh, now I thought Terry was going to be able to make it. Terry is also with CSCD. Uh, has been there for 20 years, uh, so please, uh, please congratulate her when you uh, when you see her today. Next is Robert Foran with the District Attorney's Office. Now, Robert, there's there's three folks that started all at the same time that we're recognizing here today. There were, I guess, there were five, and they're all sitting back there with one another, so they're uh, you know they're a little nervous. They're not too nervous. They're attorneys. They're lawyers. They're lawyers, so they're not too nervous. But uh, they all started at the same time, and, and uh, so you know it was it was interesting to talk with them because each one of them mentioned the fact that there were, I guess, five or six that started, and uh, these are the three that are uh, that are still with us. Robert started as a misdemeanor attorney and then moved into the felony felony area and is now the chief over uh, Judge Stearns's court. Um, when I asked him about the more memorable moments, he said, you know, it was some of the cases that over the years that he had a chance to try. Uh, and I asked him what he liked most, and he said, waking up every morning knowing that he was going to have the opportunity uh, to do something good for his community. Uh, and, and I'm going to tell you, we hear that, and y'all do it as employees day after day after day. And, and this really is what makes, I think, Tarrant County a great place to, to to work. He said the opportunity to work with some great people and some great judges over the years, uh, that he has really appreciated everyone that he's had a chance to, uh, uh, to work with. And Robert, we really appreciate the 20 years that you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you very much. Uh, next is uh, Lieutenant Robert Fowler with the Sheriff's Department. Now, Lieutenant Fowler, like so many folks, said, you know, I really don't like the recognition. I just assume, you know, you just call my name and let me stand up and then let me sit down. Uh, but that usually doesn't happen. It never happens when you're, when you spent 20 years with us, you're going to get a little bit more time than just standing up and, and sitting down. Uh, the lieutenant started in the Green Bay facility and was promoted to sergeant in the jail while he was in the jail and then in dispatch. Uh, he went over to the courts and then currently is serving as lieutenant in the grievance and the disciplinary uh, area. Uh, when I asked him about the more memorable moments, uh, he said, you know, most of the memorable moments that I've had are not repeatable. <laughs> um, and, and so that we'll just, you know, kind of leave it at that. Uh, he said, the thing that sticks in my mind most is some of the people who over the years that I've had a chance to work with, uh, when I asked him what he liked most, he said it was serving the people and uh, the security and the benefits the county offered, uh, but it was also keeping the bad guys off the streets. Um, you know, he said, my whole goal in life is to stay under the radar. Um, <clears throat> and as his dad always said to him, he said, you do a good day's work for a good day's pay. And he felt like Tarrant County had, had always uh, treated him fairly and that he felt like, 
uh, that, you know, he had always treated Tarrant County, Tarrant County fair, fairly. And I will just tell you, uh, Lieutenant, we, we appreciate the 20 years, and you have. You've given us 20 good years, and, and we appreciate that, and thank you very much for it. Next is uh, Vicki Holmes-Sauls. Vicki, where are you? CSCD had some busy stuff going on today because she wasn't able to make it. So, again, here is another person from CSCD that you need to <coughs> congratulate as you see Vicki during the day. Uh, <coughs> next is uh, another one of these attorneys that we recognize every once in a while because we see him so much, David Hudson. Uh, David, uh, again, is one of the three that I talked with that said they all started. And, you know, he started out, uh, and, and I told David, he looks way too young to be celebrating 20 years with the county. And he said, would you please repeat that on Tuesday? So I had, you know, I had. <laughs> <laughs> he started out in the misdemeanor area, and then he moved over into the felony area uh, for about five years. And for the last, really, for the last 14 years, he's been in the civil division and has, uh, we've had a chance again to see him uh, on many occasions. He's done some great work for uh, Tarrant County and continues to do great work. When I asked him about some of the more memorable moments, again, it was some of the criminal cases that he had had a chance to, uh, to handle. Both, you know, he said, I learned from both the losses and from the wins. Um, and he recited a couple of the civil cases that, w that I've at least been on the court when he's uh, tried them for us, and I think, again, has done an excellent job uh, for Tarrant County. And then he said one of the other memorable moments, and Commissioner Johnson, I think, was presiding the day he showed up here as the Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. he was dressed in the big turkey outfit, and I think he's, been, he's still taking ribbing over showing up in the turkey outfit. Uh, when I asked him what he liked most, again, it was the relationships that he'd had a chance uh, to make over the over the years, and he said, you know, in the time that I spent in the criminal area, he said, I had a chance to meet a lot of the defense bar, uh, and he said, I've made some good friends there, and, uh, and those friendships are still, uh, you know, still with him. Um, he said, again, while he's been in the civil section, he's had a chance to meet folks throughout the county, and has enjoyed that very much and has made some very good friends. He said he's, he feels like uh, that we treat people well and that we're treated well. And again, I think that's uh, something that I hope we always have the reputation of treating people well. He said, I, I hope to be here uh, for another 20 years, and um, so we'll be up here recognizing him at 40 years. Uh, so, David, we hope you are too, and we appreciate very much the work you've given and the time that you've given to Tarrant County. Next is uh, Bobby Minner from the uh, courts area. There's Bobby. Uh, started out in uh, the Belknap Jail on the midnight shift. Mm. And it, I guess at that time they were constructing the new construction center because he said he moved over there. Uh, he was in the direct supervision area and, uh, and, and also in the training area. He's been a peace officer since 1992. He uh, went to school and, and uh, on his own and got that uh, rating in 2000. He was in the JPS pool, and then in 2005 he was promoted to deputy and moved into the courts area and is now in CCC number five, I guess, with Judge Cummings. Um, when I asked him what he liked most, he, again, he said it was he, he'd made a lot of great lifelong friends. Uh, he enjoyed the, the training that he's had uh, and had the opportunity to have with the county. And he said, I love volunteering with Ann and, and, and her different projects. Uh, over the years, and that's something that, that means a lot to him. Um, he went through the MHMR training, uh, again, uh, I think, as a, as a part of that direct supervision and the direct uh, supervision in, on the floors. And so, Bobby, we appreciate very, very much the, uh, the 20 years you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you. Next is someone whom we all uh, know is David Phillips. David Phillips is celebrating 20 years facility management. Uh, he said, I started off as a chief building engineer 
uh, basically charged, I guess, with opening the justice and uh, the new justice and correction center. I guess Jim McCrite hired you, and then you had a chance to work with Gary Kirby. He said both those guys had a pretty good sense of humor and uh, uh, would uh, would keep him jumping. Uh, he, when I asked him about the more memorable moments, uh, he said it was it was about one month after they had opened up the correction center that he got a call from GK, and he said. He said, I guess the reason I got the call is because Gary Kirby was smart enough to realize that you don't answer the phone on the weekend, <laughs> late in the evening, uh, regardless of who it is it's calling. And so I was the next one on the list, and so I answered the phone, and GK said that the inmates had managed to stop up the main sewer and uh, that he needed to get on down there and that they'd flooded the kitchen. And he said when he got down there, he came across GK, and GK was in his slacks and his, you know, his – Fancy shoes and <laughs> and he, he would and, would those be Gucci loafers? <laughs> and he said, GK asked him. He says, "Well, what do you think?" And uh, he said, David looked at him and says, "I think you're a little overdressed." <laughs> <laughs> Now, he said all that to say that G.K. didn't have quite the sense of humor that, uh, <laughs> that Kirby and McCrice <laughs> <that McCrys> had. <laughs> uh, he, you know, he said, I guess the other things that were memorable moments, he said, was the shootings uh, in the courthouse and, and, you know, and again, how quickly facilities acted in that particular instance to get up metal detectors and the security measures that were taken after 911, and you know, it's just those things require a lot of action that we probably, outside of facilities, don't realize. It just it just happens, and it doesn't just happen. Uh, what he liked most was the opportunity to work for Jim and for Gary, and the friendships that he's made. He said he he feels like he's being a part of history. Uh, the clock towers, the new buildings that have been uh, put up on his on you know kind of on his watch. Uh, the folks he's had a chance to work with over the years, uh, he said it's it's just been a good place to work, and it's uh, it's something that he looks back on and with a lot of fond memories. And David, I'm going to tell you, because of you and because of your department and the way it works, they are fond memories, uh, and it's and it's because of again all the folks in this room that I think we a lot of us have fond memories and not necessarily bad memories. And time has a tendency to fly by when things are working well, and they work well because of you and because of folks in your department and folks all over the county. We thank you very much for your time. <laughs> Next is uh, Marty Polsley. Pols yeah, I knew that. <laughs> it's just, you know, when you get on these days, my, just, my pronunciations just kind of go to pot. I mean, it just doesn't work. But Marty has, uh, is the third of the three, uh, started off in the misdemeanor area, uh, then moved over felonies, and then went into the computer crimes area. And he said, you know, he had always uh, liked the computers. He said, I bought my own laptop because I thought it was important to, uh, to have a laptop. Uh, and I guess that's probably that's kind of what landed him in the computer crimes area, and I know that's something that really endears him to you. Uh, in his, his computer skills. Um, he helped, and the other thing that he did is he really helped put together the electronic case filings. Um, when I asked him about uh, more memorable moments, he says, you know, I, I think back over some of the courtroom runners. I, he said, I look at the, um, you know, the shootings in the courthouse, friends there that were, that were killed. Um, he said, you know, the training sessions on 9-11, a lot of that. When I asked him what he liked most, it was the challenges of his job. He said the criminals are becoming more sophisticated. And uh, he said, I really enjoy catching them and putting away the bad guys. Uh, he feels like the people he's had a chance to work with, uh, it, may, it makes him really feel like it's, uh, like it's a home. And when um, he comes from a, a law enforcement background, I guess your dad was a police officer in Fort Worth, your brother is a police officer in Fort Worth, your Mother was a nurse. Your wife is a nurse. So both of y'all have a tendency to you're, you're kind of following in, uh, in the parental footsteps. I, yeah, and I, I want to just digress a minute and say I think as parents we always wonder if we ever have any impact on our kids as they're growing up. 
But if you really stop and think, and you're, I think you and your brother are an example of that, they do, no matter how subtle the, the influence we may think has, it's, it's amazing how many times our kids end up doing what we did. And uh, so every once in a while, for you young parents out there, it, does, they, it really does sink through. They, every once in a while, they do uh, listen to what you say or watch what you, watch what you do. Uh, when I asked Marty if there was anything else, he said, you know, when I started um, with the other folks, Tim came in and he said, can you give me, will you promise me that you'll give me three years? And he said, you know, I thought about that, and I thought that three years was a long time. <laughs> And I just wasn't sure I was going to be able to do that. And so 20 years later, he said, I can't imagine ever being anywhere else. And, Marty, we're glad that you're still with us here after 20 years. And we hope we'll be celebrating 40 years with you. Uh, the two of y'all can be there together at and that time. And the three amigos. The three of you. All three of you will be there at that point in time. So, again, thank you very much for your service. Next is Sherry Squat Squokatch. Why can't I, I? I know Sherry. It's just that last name that just. Shokats. And I, I, I'm sorry. She started. Sherry started in the DA's office, and worked there for a long time. And then uh, Commissioner Johnson kind of stole her away. And I think she, she said, you know, I'm tired of driving downtown. It's a whole lot easier to. Uh, a lot closer to work out there by Precinct 4, where she, where she, where she lives. Uh, when I asked her about the memorable moments, she, she was at the DA's office when the shooting occurred, and she, she says, I remember Tim basically coming in and locking down the floor and saying, nobody leaves this building, nobody leaves this floor. Um, and, and then someone coming through and saying, you know, we lost somebody. And the whole, um, you know, Chris Marshall was a good friend to many, uh, he was certainly a valued asset mm -hmm. in our district attorney's office. Uh, Tom and I knew him through Rotary Club. Uh, he was actually a member of our Rotary Club, and um, uh, it, was a, it was a tremendous loss to Tarrant County uh, with Chris. Uh, when I liked her, when I asked her what she liked most, it, she said it's the fair way that we treat our people. Um, and, and she recounted uh, an instance where she had had a... Uh, uh, while she was, I guess, in the DA's office, had had a brain aneurysm, and that uh, the county had understood and worked with her. Uh, in fact, people shared sick leave with her. And she said, I, you know, I, I probably never really understood the shared sick leave until that point in time, but she says, boy, I understand it now. She says she feels very blessed to have had a chance to work for the uh, county. And Sherry, it's, again, it's employees like you that make this such a great place to work, and we very, very much appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Next is uh, Jeanette Witherspoon from Public Health. There's Jeanette back there in the back. Started with the uh, JTPA when the uh, health department, with the health department on Bedford Clinic, for <coughs> there for about three months when she moved into the WIC program. Uh, she's still in the WIC program and is in the administrative office. Uh, when I asked her what she liked most, she said, I really enjoy working with the people, and I really enjoy the people that she works with. Uh, she likes being the customer. She's kind of like the customer service department for the WIC departments, and so she's there to kind of help them find things and fix things, and she says, I love the stability and being close to where I, uh, you know, working close to where I live, and she said the supervisors have been been absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, Jeanette, we, we very much appreciate the 20 years that you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next is uh, Pam Bird with uh, Sheriff Confinement. Pam started working at the bond desk as the Sheriff's Department and then moved over into the Warrants Division and uh, uh, then is back kind of working in the jail, working for court. Uh, now I've got undates here, but I think that's updates. <laughs> that's my typing. I, as I tell everybody on the phone, as they're rattling off what they've done, I said, slow down. My typing leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, but she basically kind of updates everything uh, once the, 
uh, the court session is finished and, and puts everything into the record. Uh, her most memorable moment uh, was being here, she says, being here 25 years. That's the most memorable moment I've got. Um, when I asked her what she liked most, she said it was a great place to work. She really, really likes what she does. Uh, and she said the time has really flown by. She said, I never would have expected that I'd have been here for 25 years. And Pam, I want to tell you, we're glad that you've been here 25 years, and we hope you'll be here for many years to come. Thank you. Our next 25-year employee is uh, Janice Gentry with the district clerk's office. There she is. Started out in the district clerk when J.W. Borman was the uh, district clerk, and she started in the criminal area. Uh, has worked her way up uh, as the now the assistant manager in the criminal section. Uh, the you know most memorable moment uh, was the shooting uh, again. You know, if you're in those buildings and you're dealing with those folks, that's got to be something that just sticks with you, and uh, it's hard to, to hard to get out of your mind. Many folks say, you know, I wish that this wasn't the most memorable moment, but this is the thing that we think about. Uh, when I asked her what she liked most, she said, um, it's the people. It's the, it's the people I've had a chance to work with, the benefits. Uh, she said her job has always been very interesting, and it's something that she's always enjoyed doing. Um, she loves seeing things run right. And that was the thing, that was the statement she made that really kind of stuck. She appreciates the people, the people that she has worked for and, uh, and, and, and the jobs and, you know, the di different district clerks that she's had an opportunity to work for. And so I'll tell you, Janice, we appreciate very much the 25 years, and thank you for the 25 years you've given us. Next is uh, Janet Grant with the district attorney's office. There she is. Uh, started out in the DA's office as a, a file clerk in the hot checks area, and now she's in the intake department. Um, when I asked her what she liked most, she said, again, it, you know, it's, the, it's the stability of the, of the county. It's the benefits uh, and the people that she's had a chance to work with over the years. Uh, she said that time, at times the, that the job is just in time has just passed by very quickly. And she said at other times it's been a little bit slower and it's kind of uh, dragged on by. And I think that is with any job. You kind of have the ups and downs. And, uh, but she said it's really been, you know, Tarrant County has been a great place to work. Uh, and, Janet, we appreciate very much the, the 25 years you've given us. Thank you. Our last 25-year employee today is Hope Harris from Juvenile Services and the Def Detention Facility. Now, where's Hope? I hope she was able to make it. I guess she's not been able to. Uh, she is, again, uh, in the detention area, been there for 25 years, started out at the old Fort Worth School. Um, so when you see her today, just congratulate her and thank her for the 25 years of service. Uh, total uh, years of service are 670 years. And I want to, again, thank every one of you for the time and the dedication you give to the county. Now, you're fixing to leave, and we're fixing to get into our budget. Uh, and we're going to be approving our budget. And I want to thank you before you leave because it's because of folks like you and the hard work you do of doing your job and watching what you spend and, um, and, and just not treating it as though it was somebody else's money, but treating it as though it were your own, uh, that really makes us the county that we are. And, you know, we, we know that last year was a tough year and that you didn't get a raise. Uh, but you, it didn't stop you from doing your job, and it didn't stop you from continuing to, to serve this county like the dedicated employees that you are. And as a court, we want to thank you uh, again very, very much for the job that you do every day, day in and day out. You don't take your uh, job nonchalantly. You go in and you do it with all the vigor and always trying to help folks out. And that's what makes, I think, Tarrant County so much better than any other county in this state and in this country. And so as, as court, we want to thank you for that, and I think we stand and give them a 
C. We'll take just a break for a minute while you uh, <laughs> head back that way.
ahead and uh, bring us back into uh, session. Uh, court members, you have before you the consent agenda. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. We have uh, several public hearings this morning. Thank you, Your Honor. The first public hearing is a public hearing to consider Tarrant County government's fiscal year 2011 budget. Um, court members, the uh, the budget has been has been filed according to statute. It has been publicized that uh, this public hearing would occur, and at this time we request that you conduct a public hearing. We'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to uh, speak uh, to this matter, to the fiscal 2011 budget. There appearing to be none, then we'll close the public hearing. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, if we could go to the second public hearing. Uh, we're, ask, we're requesting that the Commissioner's Court can hold a public hearing as it relates to the consideration of salaries of certain elected county and precinct officers contained within Tarrant County government's fiscal year 2011 budget. Uh, all the proper notices have been filed according to statute. At this time, we're requesting that you conduct a public hearing. We'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this matter. Hearing none, then I will close the public hearing. Your Honor, we have two additional public hearings. The first one concerns transportation. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. I'm here today to ask that the Commissioner's Court consider placing no parking signs on both sides of Ben Day Murren Road, east and west of Mustang Creek Bridge. The Location is in Precinct 1, and it's a response to citizens' concerns and concerns of the precinct regarding parking along this location. I'll open the public hearing at this time. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to this matter? If appearing none, then I will close the public hearing. I'll second. <laughs> yes, I move approval of the placing of stop signs on both sides of Ben de Morin Road. That, that area... The lake access at that area has become an attractive nuisance for uh, those who would want to recreate during the uh, warm periods of the month. And uh, parking and ingress and egress to that area has become a problem for the residents along there and for people just trying to get through the bottleneck created by uh, the... Uh, those who are recreating themselves. So. We have a second and a motion. So would you please vote? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Good morning. We're requesting you conduct a public hearing to receive citizen input <clears throat> into the draft Tarrant County 2009 Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report for CDBG, HOME, and ESG. This is on our uh, public website, and we will be submitting it to HUD within the next couple of weeks. To, the purpose of today's meeting is just to receive citizen input into our expenditures. I'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here wishing to speak to this matter. If there appearing none, I will close the public hearing at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Romanius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, we go to the administrator section. On item number one, we're requesting that the court approve the compensation expenses and allowances for certain elected and county, county and precinct officials for fiscal year 2011. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of the court, if we can now go to item number two. Uh, we're requesting that the commissioner's court approve um, uh, Tarrant County government's uh, fiscal year 2011 budget. This request includes account categories, general fund uh, $395,701,987, road and bridge fund $29,875,556, 
and debt service fund of $37,897,233 for a total budget of $463,474,776. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Just a comment on that uh, particular item. Now, there's a lot of departments that have helped participate in this. Uh, obviously, the Budget Department has led that effort, the Auditor's Office, HR, and everyone else. But, uh, and, and we very much appreciate all their efforts. would also like to thank the court, quite frankly. I, you know, for the last two years, prior to us even going into the, the first element of the budget preparation, what happens is that we ask you all to, to set some guidelines as to what we should be addressing in the budget process. And uh, that may not seem like a big thing to, to a lot of people, but it really gives clear direction on how you would like to have the budget crafted. And it makes it a lot easier on staff. And so all of those that participate in the budget process, we, we appreciate the direction that the court's given in the past. And I, I too, want, you know, I, I look around this room, and I want you all to stand up. Betsy and Tom and Suzanne and Steve and I know I'm David and Gerald, I, all the department heads, all the elected officials, uh, purchasing, clan, all y'all folks stand up because, um, you know, we can, uh, Mr. Shannon, Sheriff, um, Debbie and her department sit down and talk with y'all, but y'all come in with that and over the last two years, it's been a tough year. And you've watched your expenditures, and you've watched your departments, and you have, you know, done your absolute best to make sure that we were able to come to these things and to come to this budget and get to where we are today. And I want to make sure you recognize and you understand how much this court appreciates what you do on a daily basis. Not only just when we come around to this budget, but we wouldn't be here and it wouldn't we wouldn't have this budget if it weren't for you folks watching it again on a day-to-day -day basis. And I and the court uh, especially want to thank you for everything you do day in and day out to not only serve the citizens of Tarrant County, but at the same time to, uh, to watch and to treat every penny just like it was your own. And, and I, Tina, are you not standing over there? <laughs> And Debbie, you ought to be standing. I mean, everybody. Uh, it, it's a, it is a real. Uh, it is a real team effort, and and it just doesn't happen easily. So thank you all very much. Now we have a motion to second, but I don't think we voted. We have a vote. So at this time, uh, there's no other discussion. We'll vote. Well, we'll vote again. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. Again. Twice. Go right ahead, Mr. Arminius. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, if we could go to item number three. Uh, we're requesting that the Commissioner's Court approve Tarrant County Government's tax rate for tax year 2010 as follows. Maintenance and operations, point two three four six two one per $100 valuation. INS, which is a debt service fund, 0.029379 per $100 evaluation or valuation for a total tax rate for F, for tax year 2010 of 0.264 per $100 valuation. This is the same tax rate as we currently have. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Or the court, we can now go to item number four. We're requesting that the court approve the Tarrant County Hospital District's FY 2011 budget. Uh, uh, this budget consists of $656,538,235 in operating and non-operating revenue with expenditures of $648,978,324 in expenditures. Staff is requesting approval. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Mr. Early, please thank your board for all the hard work that they do in, in coming forward with that. 
Motion passes unanimously. Thank Mr. Early. And thank I'll Mr. Early. Members of court, we can now move to item number five. We're requesting that the commissioner's court approve the Tarrant County Hospital District's tax rate for tax year uh, 2010 as follows. Maintenance and operations, 0.2262 per $100 valuation, interest and sinking point zero zero one six nine seven per $100 valuation for a total tax rate for tax year 2010 of point two two seven eight nine seven per $100 valuation. This is the same as the current tax rate is at this time. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Move. Motion passes unanimously. Members of the court, if we could go to item number six, we're requesting that the court approve the Tarrant County Emergency Services District number one fiscal year 2011 budget and tax year 2010 tax rate. Uh, the budget itself is, you know, let me see here, the budget, um, oh, sorry about that. The budget consists of revenue of $3.9 million. Uh, the expenditures are three point seven million dollars for a total budget of um, with including all the various balances of four point six million dollars also we're asking that the tax rate be set at for tax year uh, 2010 at point zero six four per one hundred dollar value this is the same tax rate as the current tax year move, move approval. approval second we have a motion a second any discussion yeah, I'd just like to point out that even though all of these tax rates that we have set this year are the same as the tax rate we set last year, they're raising less money because of the decrease in valuation of properties across the county. So it has required all of these organizations, Tarrant County, the hospital district, the emergency services district to tighten our belts and make sure that we were operating at the most efficient level so that we could maintain the current tax rate. Very good point, Commissioner. I appreciate that. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Now, on item number seven, we're requesting that the commissioner's court repeal the prohibition against outside burning in the unincorporated areas of Tarrant County. Move approval. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of court, on item number eight, we're requesting that the court approve a professional service contract between the county and Connie Bannister Chitwood regarding supervision of social work students participating in the court visitor program in probate court number one. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Finally, members of court, on item number nine, we're requesting that the commissioner's court approve and concur with actions of the hospital district's board of manager to approve a contract with Hutcherson Construction for work associated with the JPS professional office uh, complex parking lot project. Move approval. Second. second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. <coughs> After closed. Steve, elections. Good morning, Your Honor, commissioners. The Elections Department has uh, several items for your consideration related to the November election. Uh, the first is a, a request uh, to approve an interlocal cooperation agreement with Harris County uh, to rent them uh, voting equipment for the November election. Uh, you may be aware that uh, they, Harris County lost all of their voting equipment a few weeks ago in a, a warehouse fire, and so they are trying to uh, uh, obtain equipment from from the vendor and also from other counties in order to be able to conduct their election. So we are proposing to uh, rent to them uh, 120 East Slate voting machines, uh, 120 JBCs, which is the controller that, that goes along with the East Slates, and uh, 1,000 uh, standard voting booths for, for voters who will uh, vote a paper ballot. 
and they will not leave us short for our election. No, sir. We'll be fine for November. Move approval. We'll Go ahead and second, and we'll both ask that question. I'll second for the sake of being able to ask this question. We may be fine, but is this action going to have the effect of increasing lines on election day no, and sir. thereby discouraging people from voting in this county? No, sir. We, we actually purchased additional equipment after the presidential election um, because we had we, we try to keep a cushion in reserve so that we have extra equipment available and and we feel like we we still will be able to serve all of the voters needs during early voting and election day uh, without any kind of lines and i guess my question was i mean we've got the machines and we don't feel like it's going to crimp our style and, and delay any votes why are we charging them um, I guess ultimately that's a court decision. Um, we we felt like it would the fairest thing to do would be to charge them the same rental rate that we charge to cities and school districts in our own county that have elections with us. Uh, it's a prorated cost based on the purchase price of the equipment plus our annual um, uh, maintenance fees, things like that. And you know, and I I guess I could go. I guess I could understand that a little bit more if the cities, if if Harris County hadn't had any machines. But, I mean, they had a disaster, and it would be just like if they'd had a, you know, if Johnson County had a disaster or Wise County had a disaster, we send our emergency crews up there, we send equipment up there to help, and we don't, you know, I, I, we may get reimbursed for something, but when Wise County had the fire and Parker County, I mean, we were sending folks out there to fight it. So I, uh, Harris County is in a unique situation, um, you know, and they've got to have some stuff, and I, I mean, how much how much is this going to come to in rent? Thirty one four. Thirty one four. Thirty one thousand. Yeah, thirty one thousand. What is the shipping cost? Are we shipping? Well, I mean, I no, I'm not saying it should cost us anything. I, certainly, if I would say that if you know if they're going to do it, that they ought to pick up all the costs of any you know any maintenance on the machines, getting the machines down there, getting the machines back, any of that kind of stuff. But I just forty transporting any of the transporting but I'm not sure were we going to pay for that out of the, the 31 thousand the, the agreement calls for them to to uh, also reimburse our transportation expenses I believe up to eight thousand dollars so I, I guess my thought would be is that yeah they are to reimburse us any out-of-pocket costs but I'm not sure I'd do we, do we have a problem in the DA's office well we have several over there but I mean do we have a <laughs> issue? I understand on this issue. <laughs> Um, we, we, since we have a cost for these machines, for renting them to other cities, I would be hard pressed to defend if someone wanted to challenge this, I don't know that anyone would, us renting them for free to, to another county. But don't we have a thing of, on our emergency situation that there's, we have options of things that we can do under emergency situations? And what no. they basically got. So you're telling me that every time we send and go out to fight a fire or do anything like that, we're supposed to be charging folks? No, I'm telling you that on this situation, with regard to this type of uh, problem, you have a charge that you make for other people using the machinery. We have a charge that we have for other people using our equipment. We make them pay for all the materials. And, and your, your answer to the judge's original question was carefully crafted, Mr. Reich. You said you would have a hard time defending it. You mm -hmm. didn't say you couldn't do it. That's correct. That's what he said. <laughs> would anyone like to admit their question? I'd like to charge uh, Harris County only our out-of-pocket cost for uh, the use of this equipment and uh, that is a motion okay we've already got a motion in a second so did you make the original no, motion we? did you make I did would you mind I'll withdraw my original motion and move to the words that Roy just used okay <clears throat> so we've got a motion in a second now to to charge Harris County 
any costs that we're out as a result of allowing them the use of this equipment. And if, if they want to pay for it, then we're not out any costs. And, and so, so that cost might be defined as <coughs> freight, repairs, <coughs> missing equipment. Yeah. Anything that, any, any maintenance, I mean, we're going to send them however many machines, 120, and we, you know, we're, anything that goes along with that, we're going to. Well, we're sending them a whole lot more now, but. Hmm? Do we? It was 120 isolates, and then there was Thousands. a thousand do booths. We, and do we need to withdraw our motion and let them prepare a new interlocal agreement? Based on what we have just agreed on, and probably time, time is of essence here. I, I, you, you know, there's not a lot of time between now and the November election, and the longer we take, the longer it takes Seven to days. get the equipment. To well, I, okay, you know what our intent is. Yes, sir. So I think what we do is we proceed with under our intent. We get the, we can either take the motion and then y'all can rework the the MOU. If that's as easy a way to do it, and uh, Steve, let me ask you a question: If we approve this uh, this uh, ILA next week, how will that affect? Um, I, I know that they need to do their testing within the next, uh, say, three weeks or so. It, it, it you know, it depends on how quickly we get the signed document back from them. Also, well, the, I, I would say that we not take a vote on it today. We will go ahead and and, and move forward with a corrected ILA for you to consider next Tuesday. And Steve, you just simply indicated to them that the, it's the intention of the court to approve that with the change, with the modification. And I don't, I mean, uh, it, you know, obviously they didn't have any problem with it. I, if we need to go ahead and send the machines, y'all work it out however we need to do it, but our intent is to, to help them out. We'll do that. Thank you. No actions being taken at this time. Okay. I don't see any problem with approving the uh, deal in concept with the actual document to be approved later. Okay, then we we'll can, keep we the motion can, up and going, do. and all please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank we'll you. have the revised, the corrected one too. It's harder to defend it now. <laughs> <laughs> but not impossible. <laughs> Next item on your agenda. Second item uh, is uh, approval of election day polling location changes uh, for the general election. Uh, we provided you a list of 53 precincts uh, where we need to change the polling location. Uh, this would be changes since the last November election. Do y'all want to have changes? Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank when, you. I, when we make changes like that, it doesn't require uh, pre-clearance. Yes, sir, it absolutely does. Has, has that process been? No, sir. We, we're unable to do that until the court approves the, the change. So that the, the change will be sent to the Justice Department probably tomorrow. We have all the documents ready to go. Item, item three, uh, we're requesting approval uh, from the court to use the administration building and sub-courthouse locations uh, for a voter registration drive, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on three days, uh, October 1st, 2nd, and 4th. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four uh, is a proposal to uh, combine precincts at polling locations uh, for the November 2nd election. Uh, this is the same thing that we did in 2008. It's to clarify that at polling places where we have multiple voting precincts, we have one presiding judge, one set of voting equipment to take care of all of the voters. Uh, not only does it save a little bit of money, uh, more importantly, it, it uh, prevents voter confusion at the polling places so that we don't have multiple lines by precinct. Uh, it streamlines things quite a bit. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, item number five is uh, we are requesting approval of additional appointments of uh, uh, precinct election judges and alternate judges. Uh, we were here a few weeks ago with uh, the main list. We have some additional names from the parties. Some people have declined. We have additional names. Move approval. Second. 
We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. The motion passes unanimously. And the last item uh, is the, uh, we're requesting approval of the maximum number of clerks uh, that each presiding judge may appoint at each polling place in the November election. Uh, we're using the same formula for each polling place based on the number of registered voters. Uh, same formula we used in the, in the 2008 general election. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Glenn. Good morning. It's still morning. Good morning. Um, the first item we're asking the court to receive and follow the personnel agenda. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two, we're asking the court to approve an extension of project employment for probate court one. As the court is aware, uh, probate court one has employed a, a project staff attorney for the past two and a half years. The probate court is requesting an extension through January of next year. Uh, the fiscal impact will be approximately $8,200 to the general fund and approximately $8,200 to the probate contribution fund. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. Why have we not made this a permanent employee? Uh, it seems to be trending that way. I'm not sure if uh, Probate Court 1 has actually ever requested uh, a full-time employee. It's my understanding that the Probate Court's approach to this uh, issue is to uh, again request uh, project employees and again project employees can work between one and two years and then of course longer if if authorized by the court I don't know if there's been uh, a request for a regular position what is the project um, this this uh, staff attorney um, actually works uh, with the judges um, on um, their estate uh, issues and it's my understanding that uh, most probate courts actually employ attorneys for that function, and our probate court simply does not employ anyone on a full-time regular basis. Um, the intention behind this whole issue was that this position, the person in the position is supposed to turn over every two years. This person is simply running a little bit longer. They are leaving at the end of January. So it's not intended to be the same person for more than two years. Yeah, but even so, a project position should work on a project, which is a discrete piece of business that has a beginning and an end. We shouldn't be using, in my opinion, project employees for something that is an ongoing and uh, long-term uh, without an end date kind of a, a, a situation. And Commissioner, we can certainly, um, I'll certainly visit with um, the judge to uh, discuss their long-term plans. Uh, again, as Debbie mentioned, um, it's my understanding that the plan is to, in effect, rotate folks in and out of this position over the next couple of years. Um, but I can certainly, and we'll be happy to visit with the judge about about their long-term plans. This employee split 50-50 with the general fund and the probate court fund? Yes. That's something that the uh, Judge King had asked for us to do this year. If you'll remember, he actually eliminated his court reporter position, full-time court reporter position, <coughs> so that we, he would have some flexibility in splitting the, the compensation cost of that position. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, item three, we're going to hold until after closed door. <clears throat> item four, we're asking the court to approve a departmental reorganization for transportation services. The director of transportation currently has two mechanic one positions. They're pay grade 27 positions. One's a vacant position. One is an occupied position. The director would like to eliminate the vacant position reclassify the um, remaining 
um, mechanic one position, which would result in it being a pay grade 29 position. The fiscal impact of uh, this, if approved by the court, will be a cost savings uh, of uh, right at $30,000. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Beecham. Jack, could I see you after court, please? Yes, sir. <coughs> you want to play this weekend? Yes, sir. How'd they do? Uh, 31 to 7. We played a high school team? Uh, North Mesquite. That's what I thought. I did receive something from Mr. Phillips. Um, Tuesdays are sometimes difficult to deal with. Dated 9-14-2010. Who's better? Arkansas played Tennessee Tech two weeks ago. Arkansas 44, Tennessee Tech 3. Variance 41 points. TCU played Tennessee Tech last Saturday night. Score TCU 62. Tennessee Tech, 7. Variance, 55 points. TCU's second team played the entire fourth quarter. My analogy was I wish that his requisitions were this concise most days, but... Uh, <laughs> or not. Item number one. We do have four items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid award recommendation for our bid number 2010-096. This is our annual contract for HIV prescription drugs for the health department. Our recommendation would be to award on a per enterprise basis. We did, awarding to uh, Recept Pharmacy, we did receive a bid from Hall Pharmacy, and um, they did not sign their bid document. We would recommend rejection of that particular bid. It's going to be a long day, Mr. Beecham. I'm afraid it is. Item number two. There's also a bid award recommendation for another bid award recommendation for RFQ number 2010-099. It's an RFQ for qualifications for mammography services for the health department again. Our recommendation would be to award the mammography services to Comprehensive Breast Care Center of Texas, Maxim Health Services Corporation, and the Pathology Lab Services to ProPath Services and Baylor All Saints Medical Center. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Number three is also a bid award recommendation, another one for bid number 2010-104. This is a new annual contract for specific supplies for the medical examiner's office. A recommendation would be to award on a pre-enterprise basis to the primary and secondary vendors that are shown in your court communique. Um, we do have several items that uh, we need to bring to the court's attention uh, we are, where we are recommending rejection of their bids for certain items. Um, bid received from Fisher Scientific on item 31 um, did not meet specifications because of the appropriate quantity size. We asked for a five-gallon size container. They did not provide that. Uh, we would recommend rejection of that particular item from that company. Item number five from a company called Interboro Packing out of the New York area um, would have been considered for a secondary award. These are disposable um, aprons. Um, they actually submitted a bid for an, a plastic disposal apron with, uh, with a lobster on the front of the apron. Sounds like a good old Baton Rouge boy. Um, we would recommend rejection of that one. I guess it could have been an Aggie or a Longhorn, but it was a lobster. Um, VF, VWR International, uh, we recommend rejection. Um, they chose not to hold their prices firm for the contract term, which is, is a year. And a bid from Kentron Healthcare, uh, again, did not sign their bid proposal sheet, and we would recommend rejection of that particular bid also. Did you spec a lobster on the front? No, of the sir. Apron? Was not a requirement. It wasn't a requirement. No, was sir. It a, was it okay? Just want to be sure. So, was there a bid award? 
Yes, sir, to the primary and secondary vendors as shown in your court communique. Oh, oh much of them. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Any more discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. I would like to take a moment and, and talk about the, um, um, seems like the increased uh, rejections that we are having to bring to the court or the notice of that. Um, we are just the messengers. Um, I've never seen it as bad as it is right now. And I think the court has also recognized that. It's been going on for quite some time. I don't have the, the solution. Uh, we talk about it pretty darn frequently in our office. Um, we tweak the bid documents all the time. Um, the most recent thing we've done to try to alleviate this problem, it seems like I'm bringing this information to the court most every Tuesday. It's disturbing to us. Um, I think we have a lot of vendors that have not dealt with the government before. I think some of the folks are, that are filling out the bid documents, uh, they're not paying attention to what they're doing. I think they're, they're turning in some sloppy work. It's kind of sad at the end of the day to have somebody spend that much time on a document, whether it be a, a bid or an RFQ or RFP, and not have the document signed. Um, the court directed us some time ago to come back to you and request uh, specifically, and as I remember, it was just for primarily construction-type projects for mandatory pre-bid conferences. And I'd like to request that we reconsider that to give us a, a chance to, to, to revisit that a little bit more. Um, I can tell you in a mandatory pre-bid, which is not designed to punish anybody, it's designed to have all the players there so we can emphasize things that we do. Most recently, because of this rash of, of non signed documents. We actually had the bid secretaries place in bold letters, we have a check sheet, we have a proposal sheet that you would uh, peruse if you turned in that document to, to remember to do these things so it can, can be considered. That verbiage is all throughout those bid documents, whether it's a bid, an RFQ, or an RFP. We actually put bold letters with an X in, in, in capital letters telling them that, that signatures are required on these pages, but we are at our wit's end to find a solution to this problem. And again, I know it's upsetting because I, I see the concern in your face every Tuesday morning. It's very concerning to us also, but uh, um, we'd like to reconsider and request that you give us a little bit of flexibility to see if, if, if some of the mandatory bid uh, conferences would not help with this problem. Because our time is wasted, certainly the vendor's time is wasted, and time is money for everybody. Of course, yes, I, I kind of have a problem with the word mandatory, it, but maybe you can ease my concerns. Sure. When you put these out for bids, there's a window here that's two weeks, three weeks, whatever the time period is, where vendors should review the, the documents, the items that are being built. I'm assuming that you're talking about having that man, mandatory bid requirement take place during that time? During that time frame. Normally it's, norm, normally it's um, a couple of weeks after the document has been on the street so they can formulate their questions. But there's a time period after the mandatory bid requirements typically when the bidding, the, the bid window closes. Yes, sir. So you've legally, I don't see how you can legally do that personally. You, you've, if somebody picks up that bid two days after or a day after the mandatory bid day and it's still open to bid and review how can you deny their bid i can't do anything the state allows us to do that under state person law and they said it's a, you can do that but, but you, you got this window and yes, then sir. you stuck this block blocking point where you have to be there uh, you know whether it's a day two days ten minutes back forward and anybody that looks at that bid and says, I think I'll bid that item is ineligible. Are you following what I'm yes, sir. where I'm coming from? Okay. They're ineligible, correct? Correct. Then why don't you end the bidding the the day of the mandatory at the end of the mandatory bid? Why leave it open? Doesn't make any sense if you're going to continue to leave to it give open. them time to to uh, 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 gather their pricing and, and 
and uh, I guess answer any internal questions that they might have. It's, it's not I my like the word. I don't personally like the word mandatory. I, you know, signing a bid, hey, if, if, they, if they don't sign their bid, you know, I'm sorry, but you can't, you can't solve stupid, Jack. So that's just somebody puts in that kind of work and doesn't sign their bid, then they just don't get to play. Then I won't feel bad anymore about bringing them up to you, quite I'm honestly. Stupid. And, I, and I feel, I feel real bad about it. When they don't sign the bid. I'm good. I'm I, I certainly didn't. didn't uh, I don't mind. want to get back into the deal we had two weeks ago with the office supply that you picked and choose and threw one out because he didn't. I'm not going to get into that. That's a whole different deal. But if you're going to have a mandatory bid, why even have the bid date open past that point? My intent was to try to help solve the problem. And if you all are good with that, then we'll certainly uh, we're good with what, whatever you uh, want well, us to do. I, I, Gary, I understand where you're coming from on that. I guess at the same time, I, for those people who do have questions, I guess what that does, that bid conference does, it gives them an opportunity to ask questions and to clarify issues that they have. But you, And so you've got to give them some time after that to be able to take those answers and put that into their bid. But you're exactly, I mean, you're exactly right by saying that it's mandatory then, in effect, you have ended, you I mean, at be, that point in time, you just you can say you can get a week, but nobody else gets to bid. I would be willing to look at a plan, Mr. Beecham, for bid conferences that uh, may not be mandatory. Do you have bid conferences right now on all of your bids? No. A lot, of, a, lot of them, a lot of them we do. If we have them, they're not mandatory except for construction projects. And the reason for that is because we have, we have a consultant there. But if you have specific items that we want everybody to hear, and, and the only problem with that, we've had that occur many, many times over the years, and that's okay. We worked under the, the, the direction that the court has given us, and we're smiling about it. Well, I have no problem with it. I'm just trying to solve the problem because it's, it's, it's upsetting to me, and I know that you guys are upset and ladies, when, when we bring bids that aren't signed, and it makes me sick to my stomach. I don't like to bring the message to you, but if you can't fix stupid, you can't fix stupid. If it's out of That's okay. I'm good with that. I don't what, think you need to worry about that. Okay. What I'm done with you, it. What if you were to, I don't know how difficult this would be, but what if you were to basically record your conferences, and then if someone comes in subsequent to the conference and wants to bid and just say, here's the bid, you know, if you want to sit down and listen, you're welcome to sit down and listen to the bid conference and the, the questions that were asked, the responses that were made, uh, but we're not going to hold, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to sit down with you and answer any other questions because I'm assuming that you don't do that. You, do you, if somebody calls your office after that bid conference, does, do one of the purchasing agents answer any questions if, that I have? If, if it's not mandatory, we will try to accommodate vendors whenever we possibly can. The, the, again, the, the, the primary reason for mandatory bid pre-bid conference <coughs> is to, if you have a consultant uh, 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 for facilities or whatever, uh, to be sure everybody hears the same technical questions from the vendors at the pre-bid as well as our own purchasing staff. And we, we place a lot of emphasis on please sign it, the bonding might be required. Do not forget this because well, at I the end of the day, you may, you may not come out too well. As opposed to mandatory conferences, if you simply record the conference and say, you know, just so that there's not any other questions asked and that those folks that made it to the conference don't fail to hear a question that you're going to ask, uh, since you didn't make it to the bid conference, you're welcome to listen to the recorded session. That will give you the opportunity to hear any questions asked, any statements that we make, and, and that's all. And, you know, if you have any additional questions, we're sorry you should have made it to the bid conference. But at least you're given the opportunity to hear. And then, you know, if you want to do that the day before, and then you want to come in and, and prepare that bid and file it the next day, you can do it. Uh, but that kind of solves the problem with the mandatory bid. Well, yeah, but I still don't see how you can hold a bid open. Have a mandatory date and then hold the bid open because it's open to the public to bid. Okay? Correct? That solves this problem. I, but I, do you see a problem here? I want an answer. <laughs> well, I've not been, been terribly comfortable with the word mandatory. Uh, if that's what, if that is toward what your question is, uh, I, th I see your point. 
I understand we use it in construction a lot. And, in construction, and it makes sense. It makes a little more sense. Okay. I'm not sure that our problem with these other bids and then the failure to follow up on them is related to mandatory pre-bid conferences when signing the document was not done. That, that, I, I know there's other ones, and I know it's not just that one. And, uh, but a mandatory is a tricky word to use when, you, when this statute is, is clear. We open the bids. You know, we have them open for a specified amount of time, and anyone can bid on them. I think we would have a hard time sticking mandatory. I, I, like, I like it, and we've done it before, uh, but the, the statute doesn't address it specifically. We have to address it through other specifications and that sort of thing. Good answer. <laughs> Would you be sure you record that in the, uh, the minutes? Good. We got a good answer? <laughs> Again, I'd be willing to look at a plan if yeah. you can come up with one. I say, I, I, you know, again, I hear where you're coming from, but I think you've got to give people an opportunity after going to that conference to um, take those answers and fit them into their bids. That's why I like the idea of recording the conference and saying to folks, we're not answering any more questions and we're not allowing you to ask any more questions because you missed the conference, but you're certainly willing, you're certainly able to well, listen to that conference. I even have a problem with that. <laughs> you're not answering any more questions. Maybe not every question comes up at that pretty big conference. Okay. That, no, but so at least everybody if, that was there got to hear the same thing. If the window's open, you got to play the game all the way through from day one till the day the window closes. Well, then, I, I think it's a good idea to record it. But is it mandatory that somebody that bids it after the bid, you have your meeting, is it mandatory that you listen to it? No, I don't care whether they no, listen to if it. I were, well, what if, I don't want to do is have our purchasing people. It wouldn't every, be any different. Well, yes, it would be. Because, yes, it would be. Now. And not every question would get asked. Paul. They've got a process now where questions are answered after the bid conference, and they circulate the, an the question and the answer. Sure. To everybody who has picked up a bid package, do you and you have addendums? Not, you know, change things. We've, change. We, we've had situations in the past where 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 they certainly were not mandatory pre-bid conferences. If I were a vendor, I would look for every competitive edge I could acquire, and taking the time to come to a to a a, a conference where where you know you're going to get your questions answered would be a way to do that. What's happened in the past, quite honestly, more than just once or twice. Um, where we had uh, a pre-bid conference and we accommodated somebody else that came in after the fact, they asked a different question and the same message was not given to the rest of the folks that took their own time to attend a non-mandatory conference. They get a different answer from the technical person, whoever it was in the county. So they got, they got a leg up, if you wish, to prepare their document. And that is an excellent way they to shut get the wind. Okay. I'm just if trying you're to fix the problem. leave the window open. I don't see how you can do it. Well, I think that's what I guess, Jerry, under the situation of where if you want the people to be able to bid, you can't shut the window because they're not going to turn the bids in the day that they have that conference. I right? I recognize that. But okay, so then if you let them go after that, then every you've got to have you've got one or two choices. If you let them ask additional questions, then all those questions have to be circulated. And if you start that process, then you're going to open our staff up to, there's, there's going to be no need to come to the conference because everybody can call in and ask their questions. If somebody got the wrong information and that information went forward to the other people, the other people who picked up plans, then that, I mean, that's on you to get that information out. Well, that's why they shouldn't be answering any questions after they have that bid conference. Could be a different question. They should have been at the bid conference. They don't get an answer to a different, they don't get to ask a different question. They can listen to what happened That's in the bid conference. That's not the way bidding works, Glenn. It doesn't work that way. You, I mean, you're going through a set of plans. So, you're, so you come you're to the bid conference, and then I come in later, and I ask my question, and you don't get to hear my question being asked, or you don't get to hear the answer it, to it. It is, a, it is the duty of the purchasing department if something 
If somebody comes in and sees a situation that changes and gives somebody else an advantage, it would be the duty of, if they're giving somebody a different answer, it would I'm be I'm suggesting their they duty. shouldn't do that. I'm suggesting they shouldn't well, Maybe do it that. has to be done. Maybe it needs to be a different answer. Why? Well, because they put out a bid. They gave everybody an opportunity to come in and ask their questions at a, at a prescribed time, and most of them did. Very few construction jobs and, you know, bid without having some addendums and changes. It rarely ever happens. Well, they're usually and some of them are, the changes are, occur after they've been offered and we have a change order. No, no. This is during the bidding process. So changes are, you know, architect has. How many bids do we do a year? <laughs> Several hundred. My concern is, is we're going to open the door to where nobody feels like they need to come to the bid conference anymore because they can they can just pick up the phone and call somebody in purchasing and get their answer done at that time. Maybe not. Or maybe, I mean, sure they can. But I think you'll still see most of the people go to the bid conference. If you're going to leave the door open, Glenn, you cannot shut them out from bidding, in my opinion. Now, if y'all don't want to answer, if you don't want to answer any questions, and, and something comes up, then that's up to you. I, I don't suggest that, but that's up to you. We've never done that before. Not we've answered, answered the we've question. Answered, we answer the questions when we pop, as long as we possibly can. But it does take time, if even with, and this is not that's even your job to, 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 to give those people that information. Yes, it is. Isn't it? I'm doing it now. Okay. I'm just not. I'm, I, this, I just don't like the word mandatory. <clears throat> it doesn't, if you're going to hold that bid open, I don't see how you can do that or how you've been. I know this is a healthy conversation, but but maybe the wrong group is addressing this in that we really don't have the authority to tell Jack what to do. Uh, we can tell him what we like or don't like, but there's a purchasing board here in Tarrant County. Good point. And probably what we need to do is write down the concerns that we have with the procedures that are in place now and let's send that to the purchasing board and the DA's office and let them review it and let that board take a look at it and respond back to us. I think that's fine, especially since the two people who, or well, at least one of the persons who has the most questions is on there and you're on there. So y'all go ahead and write it down. Well, I've, I've, <laughs> I've got some questions. And I think that, I mean, I think that's what I'm hearing, but. Um, but I hear what y'all are saying, and I, you're exactly right. It's it's really the purchasing board who should be responding and and creating those deals. And so, I think that's a, a very good point, and we'll go from let them do that and go and in from that standpoint. My only concern was again, we were trying to help solve a problem, and I was trying to bring that to the court's attention. We are frustrated then that we have to bring that message to you guys every Tuesday and ladies every Tuesday. Item number four. Bid award recommendation for bid number 2010-116, sale of recycled paper. A recommendation to, would be to award to the high bidder, um, Evergreen Sales. Uh, white ledger selling for $330 a ton and mixed ledger at $212.50 a ton. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Does anyone have any desire to go back to item number one? Well, How is the who has the annual contract for HIV prescription drugs? Recept Pharmacy is the is a recommended award. Now, who has it currently? Ooh. I assume that it it continues until replaced. Yes, sir. Recept, they, I just heard him say that. The, Recept has it now. Same company has the current Same contract. Company. Yes, sir. I'll move approval. I'll second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Commissioner <laughs> Pickus. <clears throat> yes, sir. My you computer's on. You have a, a, a facilities use agreement on the agenda. I do. Let me find it here. This is uh, second. <laughs> <laughs> this is for our Empowering Seniors uh, event, and this is a agreement with uh, 
see their first uh, first Baptist, Baptist Church, Baptist Church, Baptist Church, Church Eulis. Uh, of Eulis. And I would, did you move for approval? I have a second and a motion. We're done. Again. Uh, any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Any appointments today? There being none, <coughs> then we will move to the claims, including the addendum. Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Briefing items, Mr. Maines? None at this time, Your Honor. Good answer. <laughs> Given that, we will uh, recess our open session and proceed to closed session to discuss items exempted under sections 551.071, 072, 074, 076, and 087 of the Texas Government Code.
If Gary had got in here, we would have. You're exactly right. <laughs> Just about to hand J.D. the gavel. Having returned from closed session and there being no business uh, to conduct at this time, we are adjourned. <laughs>